In the DNA Discovery Center, much of the research that goes on there is using genetics and DNA technologies to understand the evolutionary history of a group of organisms. DNA is the um, genetic map that essentially tells each of our cells um, what they need to be doing in each of us as an individual, but it also contains the evolutionary history of things that have happened to us in the past. And we can use that genetic material to understand what has shaped us as a species, and this is what we'll do with the ant DNA. So after we've curated the specimens and put them into the collections, the remaining ants go down to the freezer where we can keep their DNA and the specimens for a longer period of time. So in order to gain access to that genetic material inside each individual ant, we place an individual ant in a tube, as well as a metal bead, and then once this is shaken at a very fast speed, it essentially crushes open that ant, as well as the cells inside, freeing the DNA. So next, after we've actually pulverized or crushed that individual ant, we go through a series of chemical reactions. We're not only essentially removing the proteins and the fats and lipids that are inside each individual ant, we're also making sure that those remaining cells are cracked open so that we have access to all of the DNA. So after we've added the chemicals to the individual ants, we put them into the hybridization oven, which will incubate and rotate that for two hours to overnight. Once it comes out of that oven, we'll do the remaining steps within the chemical reaction to ensure that we have the clean DNA and nothing else left in that sample. So once we've extracted the DNA, um, we now want to focus in on specific parts of the genome, and we want to choose genes that we know will tell us a little bit about the evolutionary history of the group. And that's where PCR, or the polymerase chain reaction, comes in. So the polymerase chain reaction allows us to make millions of copies of the part of the genome we're interested in. So after we've created millions of copies of our DNA, we need to then label the individual nucleotides, or letters of our DNA, with a label that can be read by the sequencing laser. In order to do that, we give them each a specific color code that can be read by the laser in the sequencing machine. Each of those building blocks, the four bases, A, T, C, and G, can then be passed in front of the laser to visualize those specific nucleotides or bases in the order in which they appear within the ant genome. We then take those labeled nucleotides or bases and put them onto the sequencing machine. What comes out on the other side is essentially a computer file that reads those DNA bases back to us. We can then visualize each of those DNA bases, which are now labeled as a separate color, and compare them across individual species. And changes in that DNA tell us something about the evolutionary history of the individuals we sequenced.